Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Road to Grandmaster series. This is my second tournament back, and this is the eighth round recap out of nine games. Thus far in the tournament, things have been going very well. Uh, I have won five games, and I've made two draws, so I've got six points out of seven, and by the luck of the draw, uh, the way that the pairings are made, uh, on the last day I'm actually playing the two players whose ratings are below 2100. They are the lowest seeded players in the event. Uh, and, uh, I can't relax. And I didn't relax. And that's what I'm going to be showing you in today's video. Also, shout out to the amazing people on Patreon, who saw this recap a little bit earlier than the rest of you. And, uh, you know, reviewed it, and told me I have a really nice looking beard. So, going into this game, I had a strange opponent. So, Alexander Krechtov, uh, like 7-8 years ago, was like 23-2400. In fact, you can see that he's got a FIDA Master title. So, for whatever reason, over the last few years, maybe it's the fact that there's a lot of kids playing the game now, maybe it's, you know, whatever it might be, he's lost a lot of rating. Um, but guys like this are still kind of dangerous because if you look at his games, he frequently goes to types of positions that he really likes. And a lot of those positions involve the modern defense. So he basically will put the bishop on g7, he'll put the knight here, he'll put the knight here. The engine always is going to like his opponent's position. But he's in a comfort zone that he really likes. And for that reason, I'm going to show you this game with no eval bar. And I'm going to tell you why. Because the opening that he chose, which is the modern defense, is generally kind of hated by the engine. So for the entirety of the game... This hovers at a slightly better position, but I would, like to, I would like you to look at this game as a human being. So, before the game, I was deciding what to do, because in the tournament he had been playing e4, e5, I thought maybe I can surprise him with something in e4, e5, uh, whatever. And, you know, against d4, he really likes to play the Slav defense, but a very specific Slav defense, g6, which is uber, uber solid. Uh, and very annoying. I mean, if like, I'll, if I, if there's much more interesting ways to play. So I played c4 because I thought maybe he would mix it up, but he didn't go e5. Uh, he played g6 anyway, and so I was like, okay, well, I guess I have to, you know, play in a standard way. Now, I figured at this point he would not play knight f6 because knight f6 is mainline king's Indian defense. And like I said, he likes his kind of KG fighting style openings. So he went knight d7, which I low-key predicted uh because that morning i was reviewing different setups against you know modern and king's indian and i decided i was going to play like this i was going to play bishop 2e3 and knight e2 which is why i didn't spend much time during the game there's a million different ways to play knight f3 is good knight e2 is good knight e2 is nice because basically you try to play f3 so that stops knight g4 and this is kind of called the it's like a sameish it's what it's called sameish it's when you're putting the pawn on f3 uh, and, I, and I was, you know, I was ready for this. And then he went knight e7. And still, of course, I can pre-move moves like f3, right? And I wanted to play queen d2 and quickly castle. But then I was like, hold on. If I play queen d2, what is stopping him from playing f5? And the plan here is actually kind of fascinating. I didn't want to take, because I, I'm like, why am I letting his knight get out and target my bishop? Of course, as always, engine is not concerned. Like I said, this is why I'm keeping this thing off. It's not concerned. And I thought, bishop here, bishop f6, if takes queen f6, I was like, why am I... Like, he just goes back and he castles. I was like, I, this doesn't seem like I did anything right. And then I was like, well, I'll just go f3 to get my bishop back. And then I was like, what if he takes? And then what if he takes? And I'm sitting there going, wait a minute, this is terrible. He's going to put his knight here. I will literally never remove it because I lost the D and an F pawn. So then I was like, okay, well, then I'm going to take with the knight. But then if I take with the knight, he's going to play knight f5 and he's going to get all his pieces out. So I couldn't, I couldn't, I, I didn't understand, right? Like I'm sitting there and I'm going, this is the problem with not having a full understanding of these positions as white because they're very weird for black. Normally in a King's Indian, this is the structure. So when f3 happens, you can just play, like, I mean, when f5 happens, you play like this, and here white is just, you know, like h3, you stop knight g4, you have a fantastic position. Black has nothing. So I thought, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm super smart. Watch this. Wicked smat. Like he says in, uh, 
Goodwill hunting. I'm gonna go h4. He needs to acknowledge me. He obviously can't castle because castling is stupid because he's just gonna let me go h5. Uh, and I was like, well, if he plays h5, now this makes way less sense because there's a gaping hole on g5. Like, I will just live there. He will not be able to generate an attack. So I was like, all right, h4, here we go, boom. I'm walking around the room. I'm feeling good with my decision. Plays f5 anyway. And I was like, what? He could do that? And yeah, he can. And you know, what's funny is that, again, I thought taking was just not a good move. Because I was like, why am I letting him get his pieces out? I shouldn't be doing that. Of course I should play f3. Then he castled. And I sat there, and I was very annoyed. I was very, very annoyed. Which is why on the next move, I spent 16 minutes. And I'll tell you why I was annoyed. I was annoyed because after going pawn to h5, basically he completely ignored me. And my pawn cannot go backwards. Remember how a move ago, uh, I mean a moment ago, I showed you this position? Where I take back in the center, I control the g4 square with my pawn. I can no longer do that. And what really got me concerned here was if I played the move d5, then after pawn takes, pawn takes, knight f6, this is terrible for me. Like, it's not that it's losing, but it's completely not what I want. So my desire to surprise, like, I, I just, I can't bring the pawn back. So I got really annoyed at myself for over committing. Now I was thinking, okay, I'm going to play h5, but what happens if he takes on e4? Now if I play fe4 trying to control that knight, he's going to play pawn takes d4, knight takes d4, and move his knight out somewhere. And he's going to be completely happy. The engine even likes here just knight f6. And I, I have nothing. He's going to put his knight on g4, and again, I have the same problem. So I'm sitting at the board, and I'm like, wait, this is really not good. So I play h5 because, you know, and, and what I had calculated here was if he takes, if he takes, I'm going to play uh, probably h6, maybe this. Then I'm going to go here, and the queen is going to go here. I'm going to shove this backwards, and then I'm going to close the center. So after spending 15 minutes on the clock, I decided that was the only way to play. I have to go here. Use my h pawn. You would think I want to open up his h file. No, I have to have the perfect. And, and here, after spending 16 minutes, he played this move in like five. And I was so annoyed. I was like, bro, I just calculated so many freaking lines. I looked at so many ways he could take, take, get his knight out, get his knight out, get his piece out. He didn't even, he just went here. It's not even a bad move, but it's so psychologically challenging to have spent 16 minutes for the dude to spit in your face. He didn't actually do that, all right? That's not, that's a euphemism. Uh, I, I was like, bro, are you kidding me? I, so I went bishop f2, he went g5, and I'm like, okay. So his idea is uh, to get a position that looks like this. And then his idea is to go g4, knight f6, and keep attacking. It's like, okay, I'm down on time. Let me make this decision. So I played h6. h6 is correct. I cannot let him put his own pawn there because then he's going to have a really powerful structure and my pawn's going to be a target in the future. This is a better move because even though this pawn is still capturable if he sets up the right way, at least his pawns are disconnected, which means this is always a bit of a weakness. And this is an important move because it kind of dislodges the position. Now, here, again, I spent 17 minutes. Too, too slow, but my first intention here was, okay, I'm going to go c5. The move c5 is designed in many King's Indian positions to play on the side you have more space. I have more space. He's trying to go here, but I'm not going to castle that way, right? So if he plays g4, I just take. And even if I don't take, there's no king here. So, you know, like, I'm going to go this way. There's no king. So normally there's a king. There's no king there. So that was my idea. Now, I rejected c5 because of one string of moves. Otherwise, it would have been great. He can take on d4 first. And what I had calculated from a distance was, 
c5, pawn takes, pawn takes, pawn takes knight, pawn takes knight attacking his queen. He takes here, trying to make his own queen. I can take the rook with a check, and then he doesn't get the take. So here, oops, here, 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 and then I take the rook. And then he doesn't get to take my rook. I rejected c5 because he doesn't have to go all the way. He can go here, 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 and now he takes the pawn. And this position, by controlling my knight movement, this is a very important move, pawn to c6. This is the key. This position is worse for white. And the engine confirms it. I will just turn on the eval bar here to show it to you. I'm very glad that despite being a little bit on tilt from the way the opening was going, I was correctly calculating and I was not lashing out. Now, I still played a move that wasn't exactly the best. It's a decent idea that I played. I played queen b3, trying to set up c5. So there's a king over there, right? So I thought he would go here, and then I would maybe castle, and then we would do, you know, we, we would do everything we wanted. Now, he surprised me here. I thought this was not a good move. I thought c5 was a bit of a mistake. But then as I, the game went on again, I realized he's playing moves that are just good enough to get by, and I'm overthinking. And the point is that even if I castle, right? By the way, the engine wanted him to take with a knight, which I gotta tell you, this looks nuts because if you take with the knight you don't gain control over d4 i'm gonna go b4 like this just looks great for me i thought but maybe this is good for me but he has to play knight b4 which is a very important move uh and uh yeah i, I mean i i just thought this position was quite nice for white but he went here and so right away I'm going, okay, he's going to get d4 and I'm going to get d5. So castles, knight c6, I put the knight in the center, he puts the knight in the center. Now this looks fine for white. I, I, I kind of had a feeling here that just by getting my queen out of the way, by the way, notice, I'm not rushing. I'm not rushing to take the knight. I'm not rushing to take y. Because there's no need. The knight is nice, but it's not exerting any sort of fatal pressure on my position. So I play queen a3. I have eyes over here. I have eyes over here. I have the potential, by the way, in the future to play b4. Not right away, but this is this this undermining idea is there to remove this. Another undermining idea is this move g3. This is a very important move. We have to remember his structure on the king side that he placed there is not permanent. Now, if I play g4, it's absolutely permanent, and g4 is a really idiotic move because contrary to popular belief, on passant is not forced. They haven't ratified that rule yet. But I was gonna go g3. So I played queen a3, he went b6, <clears throat> and I played g3. And I'm down 23 minutes on the clock. So I've spent way too much time. But now I kind of have a, a, a clear, you know, vision of the position, clear understanding of the position. So I get that I need to, you know, create this attack here on either his king or weakening his center. He plays bishop b7, and I take on f4. <clears throat> now, what I could have considered here, this would have been smart. This is not a move that I considered at all, actually. Uh... And the move I played is fine. The move I played is just about the same on the engine as... The engine wants to take this bishop. And the idea is really fascinating. The idea of taking the bishop and then taking on f4 is that... After I do all of this... Okay, I can give a check. It doesn't matter. The king just goes here. This bishop is really bad. And I play knight c3. I continue to ignore the knight. And then I put a new knight on d5. And probably what he has to do, because my knight is so annoying, is probably he has to take it. And so what ultimately ends up happening is, both his bishops are gone, I have two of them, and they're gonna go zip and zag, and, and zip and zag, and they're just gonna, and the, and the knight on d4 stands very pretty, very beautiful, but completely useless. Completely useless. It, it's, not, it's not putting any meaningful pressure on anything, and this guy is also stuck behind pieces. I didn't consider knight takes f6, because I was like, why would I take on f6? This bishop is an idiot. So I took, and here he threw in this move. And I was like, oh, that's kind of interesting. So now I have a very difficult decision to make. I thought his plan was actually to take my knight. I thought this was his plan to keep this solid and to take my knight, which is why here I decided, you know what? I'm going to take his knight first because now he has to choose... Which of the pieces are taking? Yeah, as it turns out, what I did was not great. Uh, and, I, and I probably should have taken... I mean, okay, not great is like one of them is plus 1.9 and one of them is plus 0.1. So not 0.1, excuse me, just the full one. So the computer said, leave the knight here. Continue to leave the knight here. I thought, well, if I take the knight first and then I take the bishop, I'm going to be fine. Now, 
Here's a fascinating question. Which way do you take the bishop? Do you take the bishop in the way which kind of keeps the center mutually locked? We each get a pass pawn, but my bishop is a little passive. It's not exactly clear where my game plan is. Like, I'm better because I have the bishop pair and I have a kind of a clear line at his king, but I can't, I mean, it's not like my queen is going to be able to, you know, make like seven improving moves in a row. So what I decided is, you know what? I'm taking this way. The difference when I take this way is the center stays closed, but I have two pass pawns. So in every end game, I have two pawns holding hands, walking to the other side of the board. The drawback of this is now I'm giving him counterplay. So for example, here, c4, I can't take it because the rook is going to go to c8. That's kind of the point. So I went here. He took. And now we enter the phase of the game where I'm down to 20 minutes. I have 20 minutes remaining, up against 50. And there's a lot of pressure on me because Kratchatov is lower rated than me. He's not having a good tournament. I think at this point out of seven games, maybe he has two, two and a half points. If it, maybe he had one and a half. And it's like, I am six out of seven. Like, I have to win the game. I mean, there's just no excuses. But it hasn't really been going my way. You know? Relative unfamiliarity with the structure. And then, like, a lot of hesitancy early. A lot of negative... I, I mean, I was having... And I'll, I'll be honest with you guys. Before this game, for the first time in the whole tournament, I was like, I'm feeling really uneasy about this game. I don't know what it was. I just had like an uneasiness. And it was all sort of playing out. I mean, I was down a lot on time in the opening, right? As you can see, I was unfamiliar. I was very indecisive. A lot of lines were fusing together in my head. Like a lot of things were happening. And, you know, finally we got a little bit of clarity in the position when we got, like, I would say here. And now I have 21 minutes to figure it out. Now, what was keeping me motivated and fine is like, Look, I know the engine loves my position. It's plus one. Why is it plus one? I have two pass pawns. His king is much weaker than mine. My king's just going to go over here, uh, which is literally what I did in a move. I just put my king on b1, so now it's completely out of the way. I went up with my rook because I wanted to plant it here where it puts a bunch of pressure. And at some point, I'm going to have to plop my bishop into his position because it's protected by a pawn and he doesn't have any light squared battlers. So, you know, so he went king h8. I played rook f5. And he protected his pawn. And now I have to come up with a plan, right? Like, how am I going to transfer all these pieces into his position? How are we going to get into the black position to deal some meaningful damage? So I played queen a6. Played this move pretty quickly because, frankly, I don't have a lot of time left. So all I need to do is make sure I don't blunder. Now, he can't move a single pawn, right? And also, another thing that I'm kind of threatening here, very vaguely, is the occasional queen on b7. Queen is here, I have various moments where checkmate is possible. And the other plan behind queen a6 uh, is that I can drop back, which will become useful in a moment. Bishop to h3. Now, already here, I can win the game. Already here. If he plays, bishop g5. If he tries to very quickly trade rooks with me, I have d6, which tries to deflect his queen from the bishop. And now, I have queen b7. And nobody can stop checkmate. Dude, what are you talking about? Rook g8. Yeah. But nobody can stop the other checkmate. <laughs> so the queen on a6 is kind of always like peeking its head and like, yo, what's going on over there? Can I, can I get in? No. Now, he played a nice move here. He spent some time. He played bishop h4. And again, I thought d6 wins. It doesn't because he can actually take it. And in a really cruel turn of events, right before I can checkmate him, he takes my pawn. Also, he can actually take my rook defending the mate. But... Yes, in a lot of lines, like, it, it no longer works. So, I justified the other point of queen a6, which is queen e2, which is, go ahead, take, take me, go ahead. You know what's funny, my friends? You know what's funny about all of this? Is that if he goes for this position, you would think, oh, he got rid of so many of my attacking pieces. He's still losing. You say, what are you talking how? how, how, oops, why is, he, why is he losing? I don't get it. He's losing because of my pawns. He's losing because at the end of the day, I have the pawns. That's why I got two of them. And now queen g7 and he loses. So he had to kind of keep in mind that trading looks like it's good for him. But it's actually not. Now I have 12 minutes. Now I have 12 minutes to coordinate my pieces, overcome my anxiety, doubts, self, you know, a lot of self, uh, self, negative self-talk, I would say, this game. Just like, what are you doing? Like, why did you spend 15 minutes? And the guy played, you know, there was a lot of that. And then I was like, okay, boom. I already put my rook there. 
But that was before I had a bishop here, so my rook's not doing anything, so let's go over here. Now what I realized at this point is he has a very annoying defensive idea. And his defensive idea is to sack the rook. Now the engine is not going to love this, but suddenly I don't have many things. And if I hesitate, this is on the way. And if I like continue to hesitate, this is on the way. And suddenly, now the engine still thinks white is better. This doesn't look very good. So what I kept trying to do, every time he would target my bishop, I would move it. And what I'm trying to set up here is a G-file infiltration utilizing his weak king. So you're going to notice how I put everybody on the G-file and I target that knight. And I'm targeting the knight while I'm also targeting the bishop. So he never has any time to create counterplay because I'm actually co covering his light squares. He plays queen d6. Here comes rook g1. I now have nine minutes remaining to break through his position. He plays a6. It is a good move. I actually thought here maybe b5 was even better because I cannot take the pawn. If I take the pawn... I mean, this is really, really, really asking for it. And if I go here again, now I lose. Now it's minus seven. Because I open the door for... Like, it's crazy, but that's why I thought b5 was even better. Because it's actually... When you start with a6, it's the avalanche furthest away. So a6, then b5, then c4, then d3. Like, a, uh, like those dolls, right? One after the other. So, uh... He played a6, which I thought was a bit slow. And here comes this move, bishop to h4. What I had calculated here was that if he takes, and then he actually wins my pawn. Look at this. Oh my god, he's going to win my pawn. I have the very nice queen g2. And the point is, opposite colored bishop benefit the attacker. So I cover every important square. And the threat is just rook h1 winning on the spot because I get to h7. And so if he plays a queen trade, I play queen h1. Look at this. This is really nasty. So he has to continue to defend himself. And now I get in. And maybe not there, like maybe I can play queen h4, whatever, but I have like bishop g6, I have bishop e6, I have rook g5, I thought I had a lot of different ways, and I thought at the very, very least, you know, I, 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 I have some method of breaking through here. Like maybe I go back to e6 first, then I play queen h5, and slowly his position just falls apart, which is why he played rook f8. Now I'm down to 8 minutes, but look at this move, and I was very happy with this next one. Bishop to e6, kicking him away. And now rook to g5. He cannot take the bishop. The bishop is being left there alone, and I am threatening rook takes g6. Point being, if I take on g6, I have too many threats, and in this position, I can take, take, and this is the key idea. It's mate, or he has to go here, and now I promote. That is why I put my bishop on e6 to kick the rook out from its position, and also to cover that rook g5 he can't take because I go to g8! And he gets swarmed, and I sack my queen, and then it's rook g8, and the pawn on h6 is a hero. Remember the pawn that we put there in the beginning of the game? Yeah, yeah, the pawn that we moved there on move... 11. Move 11, we put Blake pawn to h6. And this is why we do that, because when the game is going to open up, we're going to get to one of these types of positions. So I played rook to g5, and in this position, I played bishop f5. He still can't take, because I'm still going rook g8. So he went here, and now rook g4 back. Now the rook is hanging, and he's going to lose defenders on g6. So if he goes back, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take, and we finally made the breakthrough. We get all the way into the position, and I'm up a pawn. He gets some counterplay here with pawn to d3. For example, if I take on b6, he can start to try to threaten checkmate. But if I just don't rush, like the plan I had here was just push. King h7... I even can go here. Like, there's, there, there's a lot of ways to win this position. Uh, even king c1 and king d2. But, you know, he, this looks a little scary. Uh, but he went d3. And he basically just tried to go all in. Bishop f6. But unfortunately, now not only does he lose all the pieces in front of his king, he's also getting mated. So he's not going to lose in the endgame. And in this position, he played queen f8. And then, you know, he resigned because I can win this game in a variety of ways. Uh, the most direct is actually pawn to d6, because he can't move, because g8 is mate. Uh, he had one moment, he actually spoke to me uh, later. Um, when I played rook g5, rook f6, rook g8, rook g4. Uh, earlier in the game, he, uh, he thought, you know, there was a moment where I was not actually threatening to take the knight. So here he said to me, uh, can I go, uh, like, c4? Can I play c4? And he's right. 
So if you look at the eval bar, it's completely winning, but not if I sacrifice. Because if I sacrifice, he goes c3, and I don't have a checkmate. I just don't have a mate. There's nothing. I, I, I don't have a way in. I mean, it looks like I should. Now what the engine wants is bishop f5, trying to win the endgame, which is kind of crazy. Uh, because if I play h7, he plays, he's mating me. Can you, can you believe it? So actually, his idea was right, and uh, he probably should have gone for it. Uh, C4. What I would have had to find after C4 is I, is I might have had to, like, sack this. And now Queen E5, I would have had to find, like, some defense. But, uh, yeah, it would have been very, very annoying, actually. But because he acknowledged my attack first, he never had time to organize this. And ultimately, uh, in this position, he resigned and I won. And now that, my friends, is 7 out of 8. Six wins and two draws. And, you know, like I said, what I'm proud of the most in this game is overcoming a lot of, like, random, intrusive negative thoughts. I had not had them, honestly, since returning. A little bit in Madrid in some of the later rounds, a little bit, and that's really something I've had to battle with my whole life. Not just in chess. But for some reason in this game, I just felt very uneasy. And it sort of started coming true because in the opening, I was like, I feel like I'm better, but it's one of these weird positions. But I, I left myself enough time on the clock and I played confidently and I inf it managed to infiltrate. And I won and we've got one game remaining in the tournament. We have seven out of eight. If I win the last round, I finish the tournament eight out of nine with a 2590 performance rating and I gain 20 rating points or 21 and, or something like that. And, uh, and I win the tournament and I play the best tournament of my life. So stay tuned for the last round and get out of here.